Hello and good evening and a warm welcome to a plus TV and the protest update. And it's still the day two of the national protest to end bad governance and the protest remained peaceful in Jos, the Plateau State capital. Now our correspondent Nasser Usaidu reports uh, that uh, Christians are protesters that protected the Muslim Umar as they observed Jumat prayers at the old airport roundabout in the state capital. Quite interesting that across, across the country um, we have been reported to be quite peaceful and I can tell you that is not a media propaganda because truly um, yesterday was quite, quite very peaceful. Know that it didn't come with its own challenges and today too um, it is also moving on fine with bits of challenges but again there is no act of violence but there are attempts. Um, of course, wherever you see plenty of people, especially with very young people, and that explains why we too were here, um, to also support the process to ensure that it doesn't get out of the way. Just as, as of course, have been seen as a very problematic place uh, with um, expectation of violence, but again, there are uh, managements that are being done to ensure that the, 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 the rights of everybody is, is, is respected, and that is why behind us you could hear um, today's Friday they want to have their Juma mocks here and we want to give them all the support that they need to do it so also on Sunday we do the same thing uh, so it continues. You can see that we are peaceful and we have all kind of leaders here who are trying to manage the, the people. So you can see that there are different committees who are working on the ground to make sure that there are no issues. And as such, for us to have a peaceful protest, we must take responsibility. And this is what we are doing here. It is peaceful so far. So in the coming days, we expect that the Nigerian leaders from the National Assembly down to the executive arm, they should sit within themselves. Let them solve this issue. It is on the paper. They should do it. The message to President Tinibu first that Plateau people had proved to Nigerians that it is possible to live in peace and harmony. It is also possible to embrace each other. We have disgraced the politicians who have been marketing religion and ethnicity. We have embraced our crisis entrepreneurs who use this primordial sentiment to try to divide the people and deny them the progress and the benefit of democracy. Emulate Plateau people, learn from our experience. Our template is a template for building a united, multicultural and viable democracy. Now, that is the situation report uh, from Joss. That uh, joining us to discuss more on uh, the situation uh, of the protest uh, nationally is uh, Dr. Ahmed uh, Bellew alongside uh, Jacob Pikin from Joss. Good evening. Today, too. Uh, Hello, good evening, Dr. Ahmed and uh, Mr. Jacob. Can you hear me? Yeah, sure. Good evening. Good evening. Now I'll start with you, uh, Mr. Jacob. Now, what is the situation like over there in Jaws? Okay, uh, as we speak now, we are still at the protest ground, but we okay. have shut down the protest ground since uh, two something, uh, so that people are able to go uh, and fend for themselves, do other things, okay. to also prepare for tomorrow. Because we also know that when you choke them in a particular place for long and they are not able to go look for one or two things to make ends meet, they, they would be frustrated at the end of the day. So as we speak now, um, there's no more blockage of road. People are passing. Even the security that were built up here have uh, already reduced drastically. Um, so everywhere is fine. Okay, uh, but before the, you know, before the dispersing of the protesters, uh, were there any conflict? Were there any uh, maybe you know, misunderstanding between the police or the security operatives and the protesters? What were they, were they and again, were their uh, voices heard? That is, I'm talking about the protesters now. Were their voices heard whereby you know, maybe any government uh, operative or government official came to address them? No, no government official uh, came to address the protesters. Uh, the police uh, have been professional. Uh, like I said the other time, there is a, a team here that is managing. We actually. Okay.
Hello, can you hear me? To calm these okay. young people. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go ahead. Yeah, we try to calm these young people. So whatever that has been issue, we try to sort them among ourselves. Uh, okay. Because at times they are just issues of excess. So the police, um, we understood the sentiment that could come with a policeman doing um, this work itself. So it's better that somebody out of the uniform is able to do it. And okay. most of the times we get, uh, because some of these young people that came up from some of these communities um, have their mobilizer. And sure. if we're not able to speak to them directly, we look for their mobilizer, and their mobilizer will definitely come there. So issues with the security, yes, um, to an extent, um, it got out of hand to an, at a certain point, but okay. it was all calm. No gun was shot, and everything was amicably resolved. Okay, that's so the uh, police, we can say that they have been quite professional, and the management of the place too have really been top notch. Okay, I think uh, that's very commended. Uh, now we go to uh, Mr. Dr. Ahmed Bello. Can you hear me, Dr. Ahmed? Okay. Uh, due to uh, maybe poor network there. But so now we'll still come back to you, Jacob. Now, can you hear me? Are you there? Yeah, sure, I'm here. Okay, now, you said that you know, they have not been, at, at first there was something like a conflict and now it's all resolved and no, due to the political actors there. Now, I'm going to say now, I'm going to ask you this. This protest now, how do you see, do you see it actually yielding results from what you've seen so far? Okay, um, we have seen before the protest, it started yielding results. That is the general feelings of the people. Okay. But because we've not had Mr. President speak, we don't even know what the mindset of, of what his mindset is. We don't know what he is up to. And um, we have seen pictures and videos of what is happening in other places uh, actually emanating. And people are beginning to feel that since government is, is becoming um, so hard on protesters in other places, there's every possibility that they are not willing to shift grounds on some demands, like uh, as easy as uh, the reversal of, 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 of prices in petroleum products. So okay. uh, people are beginning to feel, okay, government is already to, to respond. But again, that is not deterring them from coming out. Um, they are ready to stay here to the 10 day to see, okay, would government respond? Okay. Uh, is government going to respond over the 30 months? Okay, we'll, we'll get back to you now. Let's go, Dr. Hamid. Hello, Dr. Hamid. Can you hear me now? Uh, please unmute your mic so I can, I can hear you. Hello, Dr. Hamid. Can you hear me now? Oh, yes, I can hear you. Beautiful. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, that's great. Right. Yes. Now, coming to you now. Uh, Jacob has just told us about the situation reports in Joss there, where everything is peaceful, the police, the security operators, and the protesters, you know, working side by side. Now, to you, what, can you, what is your take about this protest first? Let's start from there. Is it actually needed? Is it necessary? Well, um, well you know, protest is a, it's a universal uh, tool to, of course. you know, speak to power. And uh, what we understand here is that both the government and the protesters have agreed okay. on one thing, that the right to protest is in, in alien What was not agreed upon before was the modus of randy of the protest. Okay. While the protesters are simply marching along the streets, government authorities uh, have identified designated areas where the protest should be, and then uh, it should be covered and then they will speak to authority. Uh, but uh, from uh, what uh, we saw play out uh, yesterday and uh, uh, parts of today, the protested, uh, protesters appeared to have uh, you know, defied uh, some court orders that have been obtained in uh, Buja and other places to restrict the movement of uh, the, the protesters along the streets. Uh, but uh, the, 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 at the end of the day, uh, it seems to be peace and uh, the, the, you know, it's not so much uh, you know, destruction. And uh, the, the type of fear that people, uh, you know, had uh, did not uh, play out. So I think uh, so far, so, so far, so from this part of, of the country, Abuja here. Okay, uh, that's good. That's, uh, no, now that something seems to bother me.
Dr. Hamid, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, good. Now, I said there's something that seems to bother me. Now, looking since the announcement of the protest, you know, uh, there's good yeah. since the announcement that there's going to be a protest on the 1st of August, there have been these, you know, sudden changes, you know, the government issues whereby they're trying to, some parts they say they want to, uh, from what I heard, they want to reduce uh, maybe bags of rice, they want to bring up palliatives and all the likes. Now, even the issue of uh, coming down to the issue with uh, Dangote and uh, uh, NNPC. You know, now NNPC, now, they don't know, the federal government are giving directive that, okay, now NNPC must sell crude oil. Now, I, my question now is, must it always come down to when there's going to be an issue before the government does something? You know, the cry of people now is, oh, the, things are down this way, things are down this way. Another one now is, oh, the president is not saying anything about it. It's not coming out to say. Now, my own question now is, must there be a sign of oh, there must be protests or they're going to, you know, an agitation before the government does something? What this protest has achieved, to my mind, is that it has awoken or reawoken consciousness of, uh, of, uh, of the public to the, uh, the approach of government for governance. Uh, if uh, the government perhaps may think that their policies are in the right direction, but the protest has been able to prove to them that uh, you know, all is not well. All is not well because uh, the, from the demands uh, and the grievances of the protesters, you know, there is so much hunger in the land. You know, there is a lot of hardship. People cannot afford, uh, you know, the food and other services in the, in the market. You know, there, there are complaints about a uh, high uh, form price of fuel. You know, yes. there is electricity tariff also that is very high. And then uh, they're also complaining that uh, the legislature, government, the cost of governance is very high. These are very legitimate, uh, you know, grievances of, uh, of uh, the protesters. So what uh, they have been able to do, at least they have communicated these grievances and then the government are taking note of them. So hopefully we expect to see uh, a concrete action by government to address some of these grievances that have been uh, made by the protesters, which I think are legitimate. Although there are some of the demands that the, some of the protesters are making that I think are not legitimate, that are not uh, feasible, that are not realizable, like some of them are asking that the president should uh, uh, be removed or stand down. Mm -hmm. This is a man who was democratically elected uh, to serve a term of four years. If uh, uh, the, his uh, performance is not satisfactory. Uh, perhaps uh, people can wait for the next four years to vote him out, rather than to mechanically call on the president to turn to to to, to um, uh, leave office. It's undemocratic and it's not realizable. But I think uh, at the long, uh, the long and short of it all is that uh, the, the protesters have been able to communicate their grievances, and then the entire world. Uh, is very conscious of these grievances. The government is also conscious of it, and hopefully, we think that the government may have to, you know, begin to address and respond to some of these grievances, the ones that are feasible, okay. the ones that are not feasible. I'm sure they, are, they provide explanation why that, that cannot be achieved. That is my position, my okay. understanding of the whole situation. Okay. Now, now you said you said a lot of things which I really, I actually agree with some. Now, there is one particular point you said. You said. Uh, you know, the protest has, you know, has brought about uh, a change whereby, you know, the government now are not saying that, oh, there are some things that are not you know, well done. And he also said they brought out policies, you know, whereby to them, the few actually write policies. But we, now with, for, with the advent of uh, the protest, now they were able to see that it's not. But my own take in our ear is I believe some of the cabinet members in uh, uh, the government, you know, are actually... Uh, you know, well to do and experience in this level whereby they actually know that some of these policies, some of these things, because no one can tell me now that uh, there is no, that the price of goods in the market now is not expensive. Just the other day, I tried to even just say, okay, let me even manage myself to cook uh, just a little stew and I know how much I spent on it. You know, no one, nobody can tell me that they don't know that prices of things are even in the government parastata. So now, Saying that they are just knowing now, looking at the protests coming in, I don't think it's the thing. My own is, shouldn't there be people scrutinizing this, you know, uh, not what they call it, you know, prices, scrutinize the prices or go out and do survey on the prices, you know, uh, policies are dropped.
I'm afraid I can't hear you. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. No, yeah, I'm saying that. That's gone yet again. Is that working fine? My question definitely the cabinet of the, you know, the government or from the presidency is cabinet members down to the ministers, the commissioners, they should be you know, you know well-informed persons whereby they know that okay the government or things or prices of goods in the commodity according to what is going on now it's you know it's on the high side should there be a maybe a survey that maybe a set of organization or a group or a committee would have been set up to go out there oh we put this policy in place or oh, let's check if the policy is going to work or how is it working how is it going before escalating to protest shouldn't there then be a committee like that of course, there should be. I believe that there should be a, an internal mechanism where governments will uh, review, you know, ahead of time to see how things are working or they're not working. And then they should be able to take a very proactive uh, move to address some of the uh, things where things are not going well, instead of waiting for it to degenerate before they begin to respond the way we are seeing now. Uh, but uh, the, 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 there is uh, some kind of ministerial press briefing. Well, I'm not speaking for government anyway. Government has uh, this ministerial press briefing where from time to time they give updates on what each of the ministries is doing and uh, where there are challenges, they also you know, address the public and then what effort the government is making. But I think this strike is a wake up call for the government to be more proactive you know, on matters of public concern, matters of public interest should be properly monitored and addressed so that uh, we don't have a repeat of uh, the kind of situation we have on our hands. Because I look at myself and I see that I can't, we, can't, we don't need to wait until something like this happens before uh, you know, the government does things to actually mitigate or help or assist. Uh, right? That's what I believe. But now with the protest, thank God at least some part, although some states are having issues of you know, violence here and there, looting from by hoodlums and the rest. But some other states are you know, considering looking at it as being peaceful, especially here from, uh, uh, from just over there. But it's all good. Now, I think we have uh, someone also, which is uh, Nasir Seydou, our uh, correspondent from Plateau State. Are you there? Um, yes, sir. Hello, uh, good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Oh, good evening, actually. Yeah. Uh, it's actually evening, actually. Oh, yes, evening. So now, what's your own start? What is your report from where you are, where's your location? How is it going over there? Yeah, I mean, today is the second day of the process. Yes. And... Uh, it has been people just like it started. Okay. It started yesterday. Okay. Um, uh, I was there on ground myself. Um, I was able to see, you know, uh, a very very peaceful procession okay. where all the young people, uh, you know, came together to, uh, of course, express themselves in a peaceful manner. Uh, you know, it has been it has been commendable. Uh, but, there are, of course, of course, uh, you know, like a big violence group, uh, civil society group. Uh, yeah, there, there are other, you know, like stakeholders who are trying to help these young people to, you know, uh, you know, to guide them such as so that they can behave in a way that, you know, uh, will not escalate to violence. Okay. I do, I know. Uh, so, so it has been very. Difficult. Okay, now, no one to say that now there will be a, maybe a, uh, a result, a positive result after what you have witnessed, the protest that you have witnessed? Uh, I didn't get that. Are you going to, are you, what is your take? Are you going to get a positive response from the government or by the government towards this protest that you have witnessed? I, for what I have like, for instance, today, today is uh, Friday. Yeah. Uh, one of the unique things that happened here in Job is uh, you, we observe Muslim community, you know, observing their Jummah prayer, okay. and the Christian community standing, you know, trying to protect them right on the street where the, the protest is going on. And this is something that really gives us a, a new message about the need for unity 
a black state about the need for unity in Nigeria. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, I think uh, I think that is a good one. Uh, no, both uh, religions are coming together as one to protect because the life matters majorly, irrespective of whatever things is. Well, as long as there's life, there's hope. That is the key thing. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Yeah. Uh, Nasir Seydou, uh, plus a correspondent from Plateau State. Thank you. Thank yes. you for having me. Yeah. Now, I believe I still have a uh, doctor on the line. Sorry? I, I, okay, good. Dr. Hamid, you still with us? Yes, please. Okay, yes. Now, uh, I just, you know, we, we, had, uh, we uh, could hear the conversation with uh, Nasir Rasid from our uh, correspondent from Plateau State saying how you know, the Christian is protecting uh, you know, the Muslims while they were praying, having their Jumat prayers. I see, I see that as a collectiveness and also unity in the country. Now, I think that is where we should actually be heading to. Now, I, do you see uh, you know, results generating from this protest now, uh, according to, uh, uh, from the side of the federal government? Yeah, uh, from so far from the body language and the, the speeches made by yes. government officials. Uh, yesterday we listened to uh, the address by the Inspector General of Police. Okay. We also listened to the speech by the FCT Minister, uh, you know, responding to some of the skirmishes and then uh, how the government intends to address them. Uh, the long and short of it is that uh, we have hope that uh, at the end of the day, the protesters and then the government uh, authorities will be able to come together and then agree on uh, look at uh, the, 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 the demands uh, that have been made and see how to uh, respond to them positively. Uh, hopefully, uh, if that happens, uh, by the grace of God, the, the strike will have achieved its aim. The protesters will be happy, the establishment will be happy, and the entire public will be happy. We are looking forward to that. Okay, now thank you. Now, now I'm going to ask this very question now, which is the fact that. Um, what do you think can be done by the government so that something like this, going into another frenzy protest, can be you know, adverted? You know, now, because if we are looking at some parts in the north, looking at Sokoto, Kano, looking at the coffees that have now been, even Jigawa, where coffee now has now been imposed, you know, due to violence and looting and everything, what do you think can be done, you know, to actually, by the government, what do you think the government should actually do in adverting or bringing about a stop so that, Tomorrow, we'll not hear again there's going to be another protest for another thing. Because so far, we have so many things lined up for protest. Is electricity tariff? Is it subsidy cost of fuel? Is it the cost of price of goods and commodities in the market? Which, believe me, is high. Is it the inflation rate, which is going to over 40%? We're nearly reaching 50% of even the United Kingdom. They are just, big, just barely, is it 20% thereabouts? And we, giants of Africa, we're already on that scale. Very high scale, getting to half, you know, in, in percentage. So what do you think can be done by the government to actually see to this so that nothing like protest again coming up? Well, it, uh, it might not be completely uh, possible to, uh, you know, eradicate protest, you know, from the society. Even within okay. the family forms, you have protests. In the classrooms, you have protests. Sure, of course. In the... Uh, uh, workplaces, in football teams, you have protests, and uh, it's very difficult for you to say you want to eradicate protests, but you can minimize protests by providing good leadership, by trying to uh, appeal to all sectors of society, irrespective of their of their of their tribe, of their uh, social status, and try to provide uh, leadership for all. Because the moment the government has been elected, it has entered into a social contract with the people. Mm -hmm. And in that social contract, key is to provide security, provide good governance, good leadership, and make life meaningful to the people. I think uh, government uh, needs to be more proactive in uh, you know, uh, responding to some of the, the Hello. I believe we lost uh, Dr. Amida due to bad network connection. But we'll come back to him. Now, we have our correspondent from uh, Abuja, the FCT, uh, Emmanuel Ijane, plus our plus TV correspondent. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Yes, good evening. Nice to have you uh, join us. Yes. Now, what's the situation like? Because I know I've had a lot of issues over there now at the FCT, the entrance of uh, you know, uh, protesters 
you know, saying that they cannot stay at the MK or Abiola uh, State and they have to move, they, want, they have to move around and you know, the Constitution have the right to hold protesters down at a point. Now, what's the situation like over there this very evening? Okay, uh, the situation right now, the, the, the situation right now in Abuja is very calm. Okay. Uh, unlike yesterday. Okay. Uh, most most people are going about their normal duty, but ju it's just that those working at the central business central district okay. could not uh, go to work due to lack of vehicles that were forbidden, okay. and there is serious. Every police presence around Abuja, as we speak, every corner of Abuja is being occupied by police. You know, and I think not nothing is really happening. Okay, that means that I believe that means the turnout of uh, yesterday to today is a bit uh, is really minimal. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. The turnout today is um, is not is not encouraging at all. I want to believe that people are. Just being careful since the police announced that um, they will not hesitate to use firearms if they try to come out again like they did yesterday. But won't, won't we see that as, uh, uh, will I call it uh, uh, harassment or is it obstruction of justice? How will we put that? Because citizens have the right to protest. So bringing out firearms and making such statements that they won't. Uh, they will know what back in you know, using firearms. I don't. Be, I don't think that is actually needed. Yep. Um, of course, you know, like you know, Nigerians and uh, they are fear for the for the police. Well, that's true. You know, but today it was just peaceful. But we don't we we, we don't know what will happen tomorrow. Maybe okay. most of the protesters are re-strategizing. But I know that definitely tomorrow they will attempt to come out against the protest. Okay, that's, that's good. Now, I have two questions for you. First, the one, first one is, do you think they are, they are coming out, they are, you know, the protest, coming out to protest, especially in Abuja, do you think their voices have been heard by the government? I didn't get that. Now, I said I have two questions for you. The first one now is, do you think the agitation, the coming out to protest, to, I know, assert their grievances out there and letting the government know that this and this and this is what we don't want and what we don't like. Do you think the government have actually listened or acting to them? You are not very clear to me, honestly. I can't hear you. Okay, can I believe the network is, uh, is giving us a little bit of difficulty there. Who, can you hear me? Hear you. Uh, I can hear you. All yes. right, good. All right, good. Now I want to as I was asking, I know that uh, do you think the the plights of the protesters? Do I think that's what? Right. Countryman, no problem, no problem. Help me check, let's check the mic. Hello, can you hear me? Mic is it okay now. Is the mic okay? I'm talking about mic. <laughs> hey, Lord Jesus. Let me check whether I want to go to the office. 
Il va me dire que je vais me dire que je vais me dire que je vais me dire All right, now let's go. Let's finish up this thing. Ah, Jesus. <laughs> All right, Dr. Ahmed. Yes, please. All right, we'll get, we'll, we are just on a quick break and uh, we'll come back to you shortly. Just a few seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The connectivity has been poor. Exactly, the connectivity has been really poor. You know, the network is that these days, I think they're trying to cut down on the. Uh, uh, I think they're also adding their own protests too. Let's see. I think they <laughs> I believe they're also doing their own protests. All right. All right. Glad to have you back. If you just join us here on Plus TV protest updates. Uh, you know, just before we went on a break, we were having discussions with uh, some of our analysts and also correspondents from across uh, Nigeria. But now we'll go on to uh, with uh, uh, we have our uh, analysts from uh, still from uh, just uh, Dr. Ahmed Bello. Good evening. Be glad you're still joining. You're still with us, Dr. Ahmed. Yes, I'm, I'm with you. Okay, now glad you're still with us. Now, there is, uh, um, you know, like, uh, will I say, uh, an update that just came up to me about uh, a comment by uh, uh, the number three man, which is uh, Fabio himself, who said they made a statement about uh, saying that, uh, you know, they, they are okay and the protest and they are not part of the protest or whatever it is. Now, what kind of such comments? You know, coming from the number three man. Do you do you think uh, it's actually needed? That kind of comments actually needed. It's almost as if he's already sidelining himself from you know the masses looking at them as since they are okay, they have nothing to protest. So we that have nothing, we are the ones that can be coming out to protest. Well, what can you say to that? You are making reference to the comment attributed to the Senate president. Exactly. Uh, okay, that's uh, the one uh, he ostensibly said that. Uh, if the protesters want to protest, they can go ahead and they will be eating. Is that the one you're referring exactly. to? Exactly. Now you got it. Okay, okay. Well, uh, everybody is entitled to his opinion. Uh, well, apart from true. being a Senate president, he's also in Nigeria. Definitely. Uh, he has expressed his own uh, opinion. You know, that person can uh, express uh, a different opinion. He's entitled to it. Sure. Uh, but I wasn't sure whether he was speaking uh, as Senate president or he was speaking as a, as a Nigerian. <laughs> uh, but whatever it is, uh, just like uh, it's not everybody who uh, is interested in the protest. But, you know, some people uh, are pro protest, others are anti protest. Mm. So perhaps uh, he is expressing his opinion as a Nigerian who is not uh, uh, you know, disposed to the protest. So he's entitled to his opinion. No, no, that's true. Everyone is actually uh, entitled to their own opinion as freedom of speech. But now, there's another thing I was saying now. Do you think now the protest itself is actually needed? You know, there are calls whereby. No, protest, protest is, a, protest is uh, a legitimate democratic tool, you know, to bring about positive change. Okay. But of course, protests have to be conducted within the ambit of the law. You know, okay. If the law says, okay, this is uh, how we want protests to be carried out, and then you protest has to become overzealous, and then you do it in a different way uh, that is bring, uh, you know, bringing under development of the society. Like in this protest, now we have seen unwarranted you know, incidences in parts of the country. All right. We saw in uh, Yubi, for instance, now vehicles were being charged. We saw in Kano, you know, public uh, property were being looted, you know. This public property belongs to the public, to the people. The protesters is their property. So why are you destroying your own property? Mm. Now it's, it's like bringing about. But the positive side of protest is that look, we don't like policies of government. Fantastic government. Look what you are doing. We don't like change. Fantastic. Okay. Fuel subsidy, you remove it. We are suffering. Bring it back. Fantastic. Mm. Electricity stock tariff is high. And then sure. you don't have money to pay fantastic. Prices of food and uh, in the market are going to can't afford them fantastic. All right. So once you make those demands, you put the government under pressure. But sure. if you you know overlap that boundary and you begin to mm. destroy public property, it becomes a very, very uh, concern. 
No, and that's true. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ahmed Belly, for joining us. I know you've been, uh, you've made so many, shed so many uh, uh, light. I was about to ask a question about your words for uh, the protesters, but you've already made it known that uh, you know it's good to come out and you know and uh, exercise and you know, talk and let people know that oh, this is what is actually happening and it's no good and we want to change than going around you know, vandalizing uh, properties and looting properties. Uh, thank you very much for having you know, for joining us in the program this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here. Yes. Thank you. And uh, that is the much you can take on the program this evening uh, on the protest. But subsequently, we'll bring about bring your updates on the, uh, the protest. Uh, no, subsequently, on the number of days, this we still have from you know, the duration from 1st to 10th. So we still have like uh, eight days to go on the protest. And, uh, but from there, from Plus TV, I will give you, you know, roundabout uh, updates on the situation reports around Nigeria. I'm Emmanuel Olubububun. Thanks and good evening. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.